Are we really trying to solve the obesity crisis or is this just another money-making opportunity? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Just before we get started guys, please do me a massive favor, smash the like button and also subscribe. This really helps out the channel and I am grateful for your support. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the other day Nina Teicholz shared uh, a new report on her Twitter. And this report is uh, from worldobesityday.org. And uh, she commented on the report. It says, the new report says uh, the global cost of overweight obesity will hit 4.32 trillion dollars a year by 2035. And like that's 12 years away by uh, the World Obesity Federation, a lead partner to global agencies on obesity, including the World Health Organization. The word sugar is mentioned only twice, which tells me a lot. Also, uh, here's a snapshot of some of its other funders. Let's just have a quick look at that. Some of the other funders of uh, World Obesity Day uh, World Obesity receives funding in the form of project and educational grants from sources including Nova Nordisk, Pfizer, Lilly, Medtronic, Johnson & Johnson, Rhythm Pharmaceutical, Vivas, IFA, and uh, Bo Ringer Ingelheim. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but uh, there you go. All right, so let's have a look at this report. I was very interested. Okay, so here it is. Let me just make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of see it all in the picture. World Obesity, World Obesity Atlas for 2023. Now, this is a report which is going to be the uh, catalyst or the precursor or whatever you want to call it it's going to be the impetus to solve the obesity problem all right so uh, the world atlas uh, world obesity atlas 2023 global regional and national estimates for the prevalence of obesity up to 2035 um, and country scorecards, all right? So um, basically it's reporting on the state of obesity and projections, um, and uh, we would assume, we're going to report on this kind of information, but we're going to assume that world obesity is in fact going to provide us with some solutions, and that's a really important point. So let's go over to their website actually and just see what we do, right? We'll go to our policy priorities, all right? And okay, our key messages on prevention, treatment and care of obesity are arranged around a number of policy areas. We advocate with governments, international, national health bodies, civil society organizations and other key stakeholders around the world to change the narrative around obesity and achieve the political recognition which it deserves. Okay. Uh, we do this by advising governments, responding to consultations, publishing position statements, convening high-level meetings of experts, forming coalitions, and helping other advocates and spread the word where they are. All right, so, so far, um, I'd like to think this is an organization which wants to... Um, help solve the obesity crisis but at the moment the idea that i'm getting about this organization is that it's one that has meetings okay and um, if you've ever uh, worked in any kind of business situation you'll know that meetings rarely solve very much all right so uh, policy priorities um, a nice obligatory picture there of uh, some, uh, I don't know, concoction and uh, some strawberries, grapes and so forth. Okay. We have designed five key policy priorities. Read about more about them uh, by clicking the links below. Obesity as a disease. Commercial determinants of obesity. Childhood obesity. Obesity in universal health coverage. Weight stigma. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm getting the kind of feeling about uh, world obesity is they're not actually... Um, very solution focused they're more let's identify the problem okay and you know i'm not a doctor i'm not a researcher i'm not a high level consultant working for an organization like world obesity but i can tell you i think i know what the problem is the problem is people are consuming too much of the wrong thing and as a result they're obese Okay, and the obesity problem is only getting worse. And yeah, it's probably going to cost the economy uh, $4.32 trillion by 2035 
if not more, um, because I would imagine, you know, obesity is going to accelerate as we go on. All right, so I'm not going to go in and read these individually. We're going to go back and have a look more at the report. All right, so let's go back. Okay, now before we go any further, let's have a look at the acknowledgements. Now, normally what I would see uh, acknowledgements being about is thank you to this person for doing this research that helped us put this report together or thank you um, to this person for contributing this information, right? But if we go down also, we've got uh, acknowledgements. Uh, this work was funded by an unrestricted grant from Novo Nordisk. World of BC and RT International have put together safeguards in place to maintain transparency, reproducibility, and an interactive critical review of the research process for this project. Okay, so it's an unrestricted grant, all right? So I guess that means, you know, we're going to give you money and you can do whatever you want. Um, very similar to um, a friend of yours saying, here, I know you're going through financial troubles at the moment. Here is uh, $1,000 do with it whatever you want, okay? You'd be very appreciative to that friend, wouldn't you? Even though they said, do with it whatever you want, um, you'd be very appreciative to your friend. So you probably wouldn't go out and buy something that you know your friend would disapprove of. You probably wouldn't go out and do something that your friend would disapprove of, right? Because if you did that, that would be saying to your friend, yeah, thanks for your money, buddy, get stuffed. All right, so, um, you know, might be unrestricted, but, uh, you know, it would we want to step on Novo Nordisk's toes? I don't know. I'm not saying anything, but I'm just guessing. All right, and we're going to go and look at a bit more about Novo Nordisk in a moment, but uh, before we do that, let's go and see what's in this report. Let's see what they're going to tell us will fix this obesity crisis. All right, so summary, um, economic impact, overweight and obesity, okay. And to be fair to them, look, they might just be an organization set up to assess the economic impact and the problems associated with obesity. But, um, you know, let's uh, let's have a look at what value they're providing. Um, so comparing the regions, okay, uh, comparing levels of economic development, taking action. Okay, nice. We've got taking action. All right. So we're going to be comparing all the countries, um, but uh, and we have some country scorecards, but the important thing is taking action. All right. So that's good. Sounds like they've got some recommendations here. So that's one thing we're going to have a look at, but I'll, I'll show you the country scorecards basically. Um, so let's skip down. Is this linked? No. So let's skip down and we'll have a look at the, uh, the country scorecards. All right. So this is what a country scorecard looks like now. Angola, um, which I guess is not, um, not the most prosperous country in the world. So I, they're probably, a have issues with obesity and B don't uh, don't have um, you know the uh, the infrastructure in place to deal with the problem as it's getting worse. So what does it tell us? Projected trends. Um, if we have a look here, is that women? Okay, percentage of obesity. Um, so going from about sixteen percent of the population as obese in with women. Um, to uh, projections for 2035 of 31, 32 percent of women. Okay, um, men. Th this is interesting because my feeling would be that most countries would be the opposite way around. It would be worse for men. But anyway, let's have a look. 2020, men about 5 percent. 2035, men about 8 percent. That's very interesting. Um, okay, and then we've got some ratings here. Adults with obesity in 2035, 22% rated as high. Um, global preparedness ranking, very poor. Okay, so the global preparedness ranking is like, do you have the um, infrastructure in place, the hospitals, the everything in place to be able to deal with uh, all the non-communicable diseases related to obesity, like type 2 diabetes and heart disease, things like that. Um, so Angola is not in a good situation, according to this report card. Let's go and look at one that might be a little bit better. So let's go to, say, Australia. All right, so Australia. So this is the trend that I would have imagined is more likely that, you know, proportion of men that are obese are, is higher than women. Um, and it, it rings true in Australia. So in 2020, 2020 it was 35% of men 
That's really high. 2035, uh, 50% of men. Uh, women, uh, 2020, I guess that's about 27, 28 uh, percent. 2035, we're going to be closer to 44 percent. Um, that is a lot. I mean, even kids is that it's just crazy. Like uh, boys by 2035, 25 percent of boys, kids, boys under 18, like males under the age of 18. 25 percent um and when we go down but the global preparedness ranking is good at 24 percent so like i guess that's rating things like universal health care um hospitals that kind of thing um so adults with their bc in 2030 47 percent very high okay so this um just you know this is interesting from the perspective let's go and have a look at the usa um so where have we got here oh okay we've got a lot to go through to get to you uh go to the bottom okay uh what do we got united kingdom what do we got 46 percent okay um men and women kind of very close okay united states men and women very close men slightly higher men it's going to be 60 percent 2035 women about 57 percent that's very very high 58 percent and global preparedness ranking fairly good all right so you know things like i guess medicare and um, hospitals and stuff like that um and we're always told that uh, american hospitals uh the medical system is is good despite being expensive you know it's top-notch care so i guess the infrastructure is in place to deal with uh, the growing obesity crisis but it's still going to be very expensive in australia us any country um over four trillion dollars by 2035 now all right so let's go back to our contents page all right, so remember, um, we're going to be looking at taking action. All right, page 31. Let's go to page 31. All right, now this is the important part, right? Because it's all very well saying, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. Anyone can do that. And anyone that's worked in any job anywhere knows that one person that says, this is a problem, this is not good, this is not working, but they've never got any solutions, right? So it's important to actually have the solutions or have an idea of what you think the solution should be. So taking action, comprehensive national plans and universal health coverage. So what are we recommending? As highlighted throughout this atlas, the number of people with obesity is increasing. Okay, well, you know, anyone could have told you that. Uh, with significant economic impact. Furthermore, there are significant differences between regions and levels of economic development that require urgent and tailored action to address obesity and reduce the prevalence. Action on obesity is commonly siloed and fragmented, and obesity remains under-prioritized within global health and non-communicable disease strategies as a risk factor rather than a disease in its own right. False trade-offs are often... Okay, this is just wordy. Um, accelerating global action on obesity. All right, so I'm going to break it down for you. Strengthening health systems and improving environments. All right, so I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to keep this really simple, okay? And I've got a bigger uh, picture of this here, this roots thing here. I'm going to take you there right now. Okay, so we've got a framework that's come out of all this, right, called roots. And uh, basically, the long and the short of this is there is no recommendation on action except getting governments on board, telling governments are busy is bad, you've got to do something. Okay, and so we've come up with this framework, all this research, all this money, all this funding has produced um, roots. Recognize obesity, you're obese. Obesity monitoring, okay, um, it's the next day, you're still obese. Okay, obesity prevention, don't be obese. Uh, treatment of obesity, okay, well, here, take these drugs. Um, and a systems-based approach, what does that mean? All right, so let's have a look at what those things mean. Oh, there's no information. Okay, so let's go back. Perhaps there's information in the report we were looking at there. Okay, so... Um, there are seven steps. So we've got roots, but it's not actually related directly to headings. But anyway, so uh, number one, we want to get high-level political commitment and investment in universal health care. Okay. 
Uh, two, leave no one behind regardless of race, gender, age, citizenship or ability, ensuring all have access to health services. Okay. Do we, did we need an organization to tell us this is important? Um, do we need meetings and research and lots of funding and money spent to, to give us this? Um, three, investment in health workers recognizing the importance of well-trained professionals for delivering high-quality care. Here's the thing. This investment in health workers and training and things like that is only important if you're going to train them in reality. If you're going to train them to talk to people about how it's really important to eat whole grains, then, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're wasting your money. Um, four, community empowerment, giving patients, communities and citizens more control over their health. So how are you going to do that, right? Because um, right now, the way that we handle this is we say to people this is how nutrition should be okay you've got the power of your own nutrition this is what's important with nutrition balance a balanced diet is important eating lots of servings of fruits and vegetables every day is what's important eating lots of whole grains is important now go away and do your thing and people go away and they do their thing they get frustrated because they're not getting any results and they feel like they're starving and so they go back to the junk that they're eating before and then they go you know the junk's not so bad if i'm avoiding stuff like meat so i'll just take the meat off my pizza and i'll eat the pizza okay and so community's not very empowered and um, if we're going to perpetuate that then you know where are we going to be in 2035 i'd say more than four trillion dollars in the hole um, and better surveillance and data collection of disease prevention, number five, sorry. Better data surveillance and data collection of uh, disease pre prevalence to ensure care is prioritized and delivered where it is most needed to aid early diagnosis and secondary prevention. Okay, six, increase public financing for health, ensuring resources are used equitably and efficiently. We can't ensure they're used equitably and efficiently if we're not educating people on how to actually take care of themselves first because we're just throwing money, good money after bad. Okay, so number seven, ensure strong accountability mechanisms nationally and globally to monitor progress and commitments. Okay, so, you know, honestly, this feels like we've had lots of meetings, lots of funding, lots of financing, lots of research, lots of everything for basically nothing. All right, now let's look at um, one of the companies that provided funding for this, unrestricted funding, but let's have a look anyway. Okay, so this is Novo Nordisk's ugly looking website and uh i'm on their our medicines page and uh if we go down we have a look at their medicines what medicines oh they have an obesity medication that's funny isn't it um patient resources uh get support for living with obesity okay diabetes medications this is odd right this is all kind of complementary stuff um, I wonder why they are providing funding for world obesity, um, hemophilia, growth disorder medications. All right. So I'm interested in obesity medication, diabetes medication. Okay. So um, interesting. Let's go to, uh, we want to get support for living with obesity. All right. So it's not reversing obesity. It's not fixing obesity. It's not canceling obesity. It's not deleting obesity. It's living with obesity so just in this line here the assumption here is um just you've got it so just deal with it okay so let's go here and we're going to stand up to obesity but we're going to live with it okay so obesity is a chronic disease but when you know the truth about weight you can start getting the help you need to manage your weight Okay, so we live with it. Maybe we'll manage it. So manage it kind of... Manage it honestly feels to me like we'll just keep it stable. Okay, so we're obese, but we'll keep it stable. All right, understand the signs of obesity. Okay, what are they going to tell us? Okay, this guy looks tired. Um, obesity is far from simple, but we've got the tools to help you get started. Take charge of your weight and your health. Okay, Nova Nordisk have the tools. What tools might they have? What is their primary uh, business model? Um, okay, learn the basics of obesity. Um, this is a lot of page changing. Okay, more about obesity. Definition, symptoms, and diagnosis. Obesity is a chronic disease that can seriously impact the quality of your life. No shit. 
Here, here's everything you need to know about obesity, including the signs, symptoms of obesity diagnosis and an accurate obesity uh, description definition. Uh, what is obesity? Obesity is defined by medical standards. Okay, well, yeah, okay. What are the symptoms commonly associated with obesity? Difficulty doing stuff, breathlessness, increased sweating, snoring, feeling tired, joint pain, back pain, low confidence and self-esteem, feeling isolated, depression, anxiety and mood disorders. Uh, how is the obesity diagnosed? Um, okay, uh, physical exam. Okay, what's the solution? What is the solution? Expectations and treatment options. If you live with overweight or obesity, you may have experienced weight bias or had stigmatized conversations with a doctor or healthcare provider in the past. It's not your fault. You know, this is typical sales copy. This is because obesity as a disease is a relatively new area for scientific research and development. This has led to a long period of misunderstanding by society and healthcare professionals alike. Again, this is, it, it's done subtly here, you know, it's not overt, but basically this is um, typical sales copy. It's not your fault. You've been lied to. You've been misled. We've got the solution. All right. The important thing to remember is there is a lot of progress being made to make the treatment of obesity a priority for healthcare teams all over the world. In fact, some countries now have specialized weight management clinics for treating overweight and obesity. Again, it's all about treatment. It's nothing about reversal. It's nothing about, you know, let's let's get this problem solved. It's all about let's manage it. Let's manage it. Okay. So, um, obviously... I, um, I'm not a professional. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I can look at a situation and say, hmm, that doesn't look like much is being done here. Um, much is being done for the people who are actually suffering. And, you know, Nova Nordisk uh, may have the completely good intentions. World obesity may have completely good intentions, but... As someone who has come from business and seen a lot of money wasted over time at chasing projects and vanity things that actually go nowhere and are really just designed as busy work and stuff like that and designed to use up money that uh, won't be available if it doesn't get spent this year, um, this does seem like world obesity is just having meetings to produce information and go into more detail about information we already really know and they're getting provided funding by a company that uh, benefits from uh, people continuing to have obesity simple as that what do you think let me know in the comments below guys thanks for watching don't forget to click like and subscribe and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video